Yo, is this? My dogs, you know what I mean, and that goes out to each and every one of me, 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 one of me. You can stop on me. All right, I get hyped. Woo! You hyped? So hyped. <laughs> All right. Welcome to another episode of Stoney's Buds. Got a long time homie here. I haven't seen you in a while either. We got Chris Eatry Inglesman. Uh, man, if you were around like when I moved to Utah in '99. This guy was just killing it. He was a K2 pro for about a decade. He filmed with uh, the TV movies from TV5 to TV10. He uh, instrumental writer in the Robot Food program. The first dude I saw driving around with a uh, drop-in ramp that was fixed <laughs> to his car. It looked like the circus was coming to town, but no, it was his crew hitting rails. This is uh, Eatry. Welcome. Welcome to the, the Boarding House Podcast Studio. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Dude, glad to have you here, man. It's been been too long. I don't even know how long. Too many years. Yeah, too many years. So how you doing, bud? Doing well, doing well. Living it. Loving it. Living it, loving it. Um, you're up in Park City now, but let's talk about what uh the origin story, I guess. What first of all, E tree. I mean, I'm guessing it's because you're tall. Big trees fall hard. <laughs> that's a good that's a good that's, that's a good that's a good guess yeah no e tree came from uh back in the day me and my buddies uh skateboarding and back in the day everyone took uh paint pens and you would you know art up your grip you tape. Put, everyone had like their tags on their yeah grip and, tape. and you would just you know you do all your artwork on your grip tape with paint pens and then my buddy had a an h street deck and he scratched the s and the t off so it said h dash tree Nice. And I was like, that's pretty cool. And so then I just paint penned E dash tree on my skateboard. And, uh, and then we were kind of like the E tree posse. And then Sick. I <laughs> started making, you know, like t shirts and hats and merch. And really, and as a kid in high school and, um, in Ann Arbor. No, no, in Holland. In, Ho- in where? In Holland, Michigan. Oh, Holland, Michigan. Yeah, right. Right there. Oh yeah, you're telling me that right in the, the west, in the, the west side, right there. Not considered the UP then. It's just in no. The, we're we're, we're way trolls. Lower. We're trolls. Yeah. We're, we live below the. So you're like a young entrepreneur. Kind back of. in the day, Did anyone buy this merch? Did people know that? Oh yeah, that's how I that's how I snowboarded. Really? That's how I got around to go to contests in Michigan and all that fun stuff. People so. supported the cause and yeah, they were, they would just buy it and. And it had nothing to do with your height. I always thought it was because you were tall. <laughs> <laughs> it all just it all just worked out I like mean, that. That's so yeah. crazy. I never yeah. heard that story, dude. Yeah. And then what? And then the the funny thing is, is I mean, it grew to where, you know, I just I had all my outerwear, I had all my stuff, and then in Mount Hood one summer, a Japanese guy saw me wearing it, and he was just like, oh, "I like it. I like. It. I want to in, import it." And um, by the time I moved to Colorado to go to school to college all my clothes had E tree on it and people just thought that was my last name tree <laughs> or E tree. Yeah. not even like E dash tree. Just... E da- it was E dash tree. Like, yeah. Oh, what a weird name. Where's yeah, that? Where's yeah. That it's, it's funny. But That's then, awesome. uh, then a Japanese guy, uh, and out of the blue, of course I was, a, I was a good little entrepreneur as a kid at Mount hood and handed him my uh, business card. And next thing I know, I was writing up a, you know, catalog Proposal. and okay, catalog, faxing, yeah, it, faxing it to him. And next thing you know, I had an order placed. And what? I never knew all this, dude. I know, I know. It's crazy. And so you were making outerwear and stuff. Yeah. Where, like, where were you sourcing that from? My bedroom. Your bedroom. I was you cutting just, and sewing it. Dude, My, oh, you were actually making Yeah, stuff. I was actually cutting and sewing it. And then when I got that order for Japan, it was like way too big. So I had to we're find. We're going to need the whole find, family stitching now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to have to like find production and all this sort of stuff. And then, um, yeah, then eventually I 
stop doing that. Good. Got Too bad you didn't sell on the company or something. That would be an awesome <laughs> part of the story right now. Right. So I sold E Tree for three million dollars when I was eighteen <laughs> years old. Not the story though, huh? Not the story. So yeah. you're out of Mount Hood, you're saying. So were you out there as a camper? Initially, yeah, I went there as a camper. I think like the second year Wendell had a camp, which was, I mean, I was in freaking heaven. Yeah. Like, Dude, second year, uh, I was just with someone else, my last guest, um, anyway, and yeah. he was talking about being there around that same time, those first yeah. couple of years. What, what What is that? That's like 92? Ni- yeah, that's what you're saying, 92. Yeah, summer of 90, no, 91. Because I think so, I went summer 93. Summer of 91, Yeah. Or 92. I didn't realize it was so early for the camp. I went, yeah, I went summer of 91. I think 90 was the first year. Who was your coach? Oh, uh, like Brian Harper. Harper was, huh? Yeah, from he AZP. was there. Um, Chris, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Pappas. Nice, dude. Pappas, too. You yeah. Gotta get Pappas once. That's right. I had like Scott upside downy, dude. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so nice. sick. I remember, I think maybe SCs was running around. Yeah. I remember Young That's Cummings probably US, running around. US, USSTC. Yeah, that USSTC, was. I guess. Huh? I was at uh, Wendell. No, Camp of Champs. Oh, no, yeah. that's that's no, Canada. That's, yeah. I was at High Cascade. Oh, yeah. Because um, we were up at uh, were the Gavi. main part of town. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, dude, I remember seeing, that's when that first like skeleton board from LibTech popped out. <laughs> I forget what those are called, but those were right. so sick. And oh, yeah. Cummings just ripping. Yeah, yeah, both of them, dude. That's what a time, huh? Mount Hood was so fun back then. Yeah, dude, that was like for me. That was just life changing. I'm sure it was oh, for dude, you. One hundred percent. I got to like hang out on the hill after everyone else left and go down the hill with you know all the pros. And next Why thing I that? know, I'm like a little Grom in the back seat with Sean Palmer on one side, and Ooh. and yeah, right. And then like and then the like Rado Lamb and a couple other Euros, and they're like talking you know french or whatever and just palmer's just talking shit to them and i'm just <laughs> like i'm just like oh my gosh these are just like the dudes that i've seen in the magazines and just all the stuff and the videos and i was like i'm in the car with them and it was how come you got to hang later you, they liked me they liked you <laughs> you're a young ripper i'm sure i guess yeah. um was were you scared of palmer a little bit he seems like a pretty oh, intense yeah he's back an then, intense right? dude yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was making, giving those guys shit, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I remember the first time I saw him out in the wild, I was just like, You're like, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. I, cause I saw him at US Open, you know, yeah. and he would just killed, I think, did that first like one footer or something. The Open of 92? Yes. Yes. You know the year and everything. Like, I was you, there. Dude. You were there I too. I was there. I was there for nationals and then stayed for. But you that. were there up in it. Yeah. You were riding. Yeah. Dude. That was. So you were a young ripper. What got you? Kid from Michigan, you know, I, it sounds like skateboarding was the lead in. What um, got you in a snowboarding? What's your like for early days look like? What board were you riding? What where were you? What's going on? Early on, like that, I mean, I was into skating, and you know, as a kid, I started to ski when I was four. But we saw what? like, what's that? Yeah, four? yeah. Just as a little kid, you know, my parents were into it. I grew up. Well, we had a abandoned ski hill like a mile down the road from our house. Sick. And, um, so as kids, we'd go sledding on that and just like all everything like that, which was super fun. And then my parents, we saw like some people's early snowboarders in, in West Michigan, where I grew up, snowboarding was like a super, like, well, that's where snurfing started. Oh, dope. I didn't know that. You know, and actually where my parents live now, like not far down the road is the Pando ski area, which is where the old snurfing contests were, which is where Jake showed up with his high backs and then had to have his own you know, category. Really? Did not um, even know about all this? Yeah. So like in, in where I grew up, it was kind of a hotbed for snowboarding or early, early culture, on. basically. Yeah. And, um, so then my parents got me this, this snowboard, which was pretty sick. It's funny story that year when we got, it, I think it was the year. Yeah. So you've got yeah. this one. Um, I think I was like 87, maybe was when I got my first real snowboard, Sick. but my parents didn't get me a snowboard. They got me what was a local, um, made, it was called Sonzi. And it was these two guys, the Saunders brothers, wow. and they were fiberglass experts. Remember the Pontiac Fieros? Yeah. Those fiberglass yeah. cars. Pontiac had them do all the fiberglass what, for those cars. Yeah. So there was some custom so crazy the thi- rig. Yeah. So the their their snowboards, what they came up with was they were sand and snowboards. 
So my parents were like, oh, well, that makes sense. We got all these massive sand dunes. Oh, you can ride house. sand. Okay, that's right. Sand and snowboards. And, and snow. Dunes. Yeah. And um, Dubai, dude. <laughs> that, that Christmas when I got it, my buddy got an Elite. I got the Sanzi. And there was no there was no snow, so you're the, so I got you're to go the sand dude champion. <laughs> <laughs> Gave you a leg that, up on that's the competition. Right. That's thing. right. Well, that thing must have been pretty sick. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, custom was, board. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much just like same shape as yeah, you know, the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, bindings, yeah, high backs, legit. but like the the straps were uh, like Fastex buckles. Yes, webbing and fast. You know, they weren't ratchets or yeah. I mean, none of the equipment or anything was like crazy. That. Anyways, no. <laughs> the first ones on that board were like that hook over slap down, or, or I don't know. What yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah, like a, yeah. Wasn't really a ratchet yet. Yeah, no. Did I've... your parents skate or snowboard, or they just. No. They just were like, cool, just, let's yeah. get this guy out. Yeah. Let's, get, let's get this kid going. Keep him out of the house. So he's, yeah, true. You know? <laughs> I mean, back then we weren't on the phones. We were outdoors doing stuff. Exactly. And you're in, in a place where it sounds like it's probably pretty cool cool vibe and safe and you can just go out and, and do your thing do our do our gig yeah it was it was really cool did you try snurf surf snurfing is that what we we're calling it yeah i mean we were snurfing as kids and you know just in the backyard or behind three wheelers getting towed technically on snurfing is just no bindings getting pulled oh, no just no bindings no bindings it's like a water ski is basically yeah. all it was is that you know? burton thing i have there a snurfer okay. I mean, I'd call that more of a pow surfer these pow days. Pow surfer these days. Yeah, so what's or, the difference? What? How do we... I don't know. Did snurfers have like the uh, rope Snurfers the had nose? a rope on the nose. Okay. But they, and they were very V-shaped. Gotcha. And okay. just and they just were narrow like a water ski. Yeah, they were narrow, huh? Um, so maybe no the width? No side cut, no nothing like that. It yeah. was just, they were just narrow and had a rope and you would just pretty much just go straight bombing down Closer to what those guys in Turkey... <laughs> we're putting out with the stick they had the stick and st- or they had a the rope and a stick maybe i don't probably, know probably whole, yeah. whole kit i forget what those were called but snurfers are yeah, kind of yeah, closer yeah. to that yeah damn dude so you uh you showed some talent i take it i guess and snowboarding yeah yeah or yeah, was it more just right. you, sh- you were passionate so you got to camp and you're riding a lot and yeah i mean i i had skills before i got to camp and yeah you know it's you're like, competing. and i was skating and yeah i was already compete well was i competing I don't know if I, I, mean, was, I, know I was. I know like I Green was probably. Series. I probably competed in a couple contests, and then I went to camp, and then it was like Wendell was like, "Oh, hey, I want to get you hooked up with Checker Pig." And <laughs> Chris <dude>. Pappas is <laughs> like, "Dude, I want to get you hooked up with Aggression," and you know, it was like all this. So you chose Aggression over Checker Pig. I did. Dude, whatever happened to the pig, dude? I remember <laughs> I remember when I was a kid seeing that in the mag, being like, what, dude, checkered pig? Right, German company. What a name, dude, for a brand. It's wild. Yeah, I saw a photo of you. Um, it's like shot from underneath on an aggression board. Yeah. I think No Grab Ollie or something. Uh, or maybe. Just like, it was in, or you, a indie in the oh, half pipe. Indie? Okay, yeah, in the pipe. just, you know, it's wide angle well, fish that's eye what it is, yeah. underneath, That's you know, what's going like on. That. It's a cool shot, though. It's like a yeah. made this picture. I think your hair was out, maybe. Probably. Because I remember... Um, back when I had hair. Dude, back when you had... You had like a mop, dude. When Full I, on mop. Yeah, when it was like long and blonde. That's very, right. very blonde, dude. That's right. That was always kind of like a signature E-tree move yeah. right there, that blonde <laughs> mop. I loved it. I'm going to throw an air horn out to the mop, dude. There we go. Um, so you get out to camp, life's changed, mind's blown. Is that why you uh, go to college out in Colorado? Yeah, 100% actually. I was, well, I was on my way. I was going to go to Boulder, but then I met like Kurt Hoy and Brian Delaney and they were just like, no, 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 no. Boulder's way too far from the mountains. They're it's like. It's kind of true. You know what I mean? Sorry, <laughs> yeah. Boulder. I, sorry, Trent Bush. It's, it's kind of true, man. Far. <laughs> it's far. And they're like, yeah, go check out, you know, Wasted State down in Gunnison. They're like, it's 30 minutes from Crested Butte and. Is that what they call it, Wasted State? Yeah. <laughs> I looked at that brochure. It was like the only one I looked at, but yeah. I was just like, ah, just, I'm going to go to Colorado, but not go to college. <laughs> but uh, so did you graduate? I did not. Nah. No. How long I, did you make it? Uh, two and a half years. And but like, Yeah, no, but it's like... You get the experience. My second year, I was, during the winter, I was barely in cool school. You were just Shredville. I was at Shredville. My career was starting to take off, and it's like, I take my textbooks with me, be studying on the road, come back from a contest, take an exam, and then just be like, on the road again to the next one. Were you able to keep a grade up? Yeah. Nice. 
smart I did. dude, whatever you made yeah. it happen. Yeah, what I, was made your, it, I made it happen. What were you studying? Uh, just marketing, business marketing. Yeah, and sounds like, dude, you're already a young marketer. You had your own <laughs> brand going. I mean, you're probably yeah. teaching that class. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, how'd you link up with K2 then? Where'd you go from regression uh, to K2? Yeah, so I hooked up with K2 from up on Mount Hood. Actually, um, that summer, I was rooming with Adam Merriman. He was Dude, I was going to ask, did you get to sh- hang with Merriman? I did, man. Dude. 21 gun salute to Merriman, man. Rest in peace, big dog. We love you. That is sick, dude. Yeah, he was. So you roomed with him? Awesome. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. He he worked with us on the dig crew, and uh, Merriman, we, were, we were roomies. And Yeah, he was hilarious. He had his car, and he'd only allow, like, one other person to ride up to the mountain with him in the morning because otherwise if there was like two people in the back seat, it'd be too heavy and it would yeah. affect the performance of his exactly, car. Exactly, dude. <laughs> it affects the car. They're, dude, always like that. And when I lived in Colorado in Vail, you like want to get a ride. So you're just screwed with any of those guys. Yeah. They'd only put one dude in. Yeah. So they, um, yeah. So anyway, Luke Edgar was at Mount hood looking for a new kid and just my name was popping up. And so then they put me on the program. But that first year with K2, I actually wasn't on K2. They were creating a brand called QI, uh, which QI. was going to QI, which was going to be a brand that was just going to be for core snowboard shops. Sick. And, uh, you know, good quality materials, all this sort of stuff. Um, and K2 so- was a ski company. And they were, for people that don't know, a big snowboard company back i mean they're, they're killing it they yeah. still are yeah yeah but yeah. they were back then they're pretty big yeah big yeah, yeah. big part of i mean with merriman he's a pretty oh, big dude. deal and, well and the, the fat big, bob. And, and the big thing is the fat bob I yeah mean, the fat that, bob went I mean, nuts like i'm a, I'm a tall it's guy a i got big i got big big feet and big boots and those tiny little narrow snowboards sucked and the that fat board bob was like was built for you basically yeah it totally was and then they um the funny thing with that QI brand is it was originally going to be called the IQ. Yeah. And then right before they went to press and to market and everything, they realized that generics had a line called IQ snowboards. No. So they were just like, uh, let's call it QI. Oh, no, dude. They were just <laughs> <laughs> quick, 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 pull the, pull the cord and change totally. that. And dude, then, if they hadn't caught that, it would have been oh, yeah. so bummed. Cause they, so they went to, they went to press and everything. They went to press. I think they went I don't to. Remember they went it. to SIA. I don't know if they went to SIA or not. They might have pulled the plug before the trade show. And what was the um, reason? But I rode all that winter on them. And no, they actually ran some ads. My first ads were with with, with QI. With, with QI. No way. But Miss, it was only it. only for a winter. Yeah. I mean, it was just like it was just quick, quick. Yeah. And then and then they were like, "Hey, we want to move you over to K 2 which you probably felt pretty good about. Oh, yeah. I was just like, yeah, sweet. You probably almost wanted that from the get-go, or maybe they probably ex- got you excited on QI, and it's a new thing. And yeah, I didn't. I mean, it was, it was still it was like K2. It was still yeah. the same people running it and everything. Um, but, yeah, K2 was... That's sick. They, they, I, mean, uh, I like the Fat Bobs. Yeah. I mean, because it was the board for me. And then I got super lucky because then Adam Merriman left to go ride for Lamar. That's right. And they didn't have a big footed person to ride the fat bob. So you so were like, I oh, am. Yeah. So luckily, I mean, I just I got lucky. Which right gives place you lots right of time. marketing, I imagine. Totally. Lots of dollars behind you. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, to push all that stuff. Nice work in ten years. Ten year stint. Yeah. Yeah. That's at dude, least that's it was a while. Props. That's pretty sick. Yeah. So you you you're in college, you're realizing, damn, this uh I'm snowboarding. I'm, you're basically wasting money. <laughs> were, you, were you paying for college yourself, or your parents helping? Or uh, my parents were helping. Well, either I was, way, but it's I like was paying. I had, I, had, I, had, a... I had loans, but my yeah. parents were helping some. But then, um, actually, there was a pre X Games event at Aspen one year before they even remember that. Yeah, before they even allowed snowboarding. On the but so for like one day they allowed there was like a border cross a triple air, I think that was it. But I won the border cross and the triple air all in one day. You won, yeah. Damn. Those two events and then that's heavy. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. that was a good day. A great day. Did <laughs> they have money out or was it just exciting to be a new? Like were they paying? 
Oh yeah, no, they I took, I took was, that money and I paid off my college. Boom, dude. Yeah. So. What, what kind of cheddar bees we talking? What, what kind of biscuits are we stacking up? <laughs> Enough to pay for school, oven. but that was a long time ago. That's so what I mean. It was, it was, it was a was, different world back then. It was then. a different world, you know. School was a different world. Yeah. Every everything was, was yeah, different. Everything. And I was not a full. You know, I only did like two and a half years. So. Yeah, true. You weren't at the full four years stack. Yeah. Damn, dude. Props on that. So you kind of got a clean slate then. Yeah. Top of the world almost here. Winning those things in one day that yeah that puts your sweet. puts your name in people's minds. So what what's the move? What do you do? Uh, on that day, gosh, I don't even. Well, know. like when you're about to like, oh. you got to get out of Crested Butte, I guess. Are, are you oh, sticking yeah. around At Colorado? That, like, what's the? Yeah, no, we well, I went from Crested Butte to Snowmass. We did a season in Snowmass. Nice. Great living. It was awesome. We had like. Eight of us in a two bedroom condo nice. at the bottom of the mountain, you know, like every dirt bag snowboarder, just but it was good living, you dude. Know? Yeah, I, I love the yeah. uh, while you were there, that eight people in the two bedroom was, was tough, but man, you look back at it. Oh, yeah, great times, that man. was good times. Rent was so cheap, oh, yeah. What uh, who, who, <laughs> and you could barely pay for it, you could barely pay for it, but it was 150 bucks or something, <laughs> totally. <laughs> now it's like $1,400 a month for eight people. And, Totally. Yeah. yeah I so think like I was paying like 150 or something. Oh, yeah. I think we were like probably the same. Like, Nobody's working. No. Yeah. No. Maybe a shift Our, here and there where you could find yeah. it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Could hold was... a job down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we moved there for uh, you know, like Dave Bastrachia was there. Um, Bastrachia? Yeah. Sick. And uh, just a bunch of us that had been competing in Colorado, you know, that were just all got along and. Yeah, so we moved there. How come you didn't go over to Lake Vale with, with Merriman? It's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. We would have intersected. Right I, there. I, I know, tight, I know, dude. exactly. It's like, and then my buddies, uh, do you remember Chili Willies? Yes. My buddies used to, his, my buddy's parents used to own Chili Willies. Really? And they used to live above it. Damn. And uh, yeah, they were the men of Mintern. <laughs> the men of Mintern, exactly, yeah. dude. Mintern. Dude. Yeah. That's but, insane. Um, so yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but, but I could see there was a cool thing going on. All those mountains were cool. I mean, all of them, yeah. Just living that that Colorado mountain lifestyle, I think, to me, that was like a cool draw, you know? that Totally. Like, even when you move to Salt Lake City, it's not the same, no. like, mountain life draw that we had, I think. Totally. You know what I mean? No, 100%. Yeah. You know? If you don't have to travel, Colorado and the mountain towns are a great place to Yeah. Great just place to be. up, right? And, yeah. like, you're just in this cool bubble, I guess, where yeah. it's... Uh, one thing that tripped me out about Vail, you're just like, there's the, the highway <laughs> and then the mountain and that's it. You're just in this little zone. And the highway runs through it? Yeah, the highway <laughs> runs through it, dude. <laughs> that's good. I never said that. but that's, I never thought about that, but that's a good one because it's all it was. Is, a, is the other mountain towns kind of like that? Just the highway through it's just Vail. I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. like if you think about Brack, it's like you get off the highway and you totally. go your own zone. Yeah, just, yeah. Vail's just a freaking highway town. Yeah. But man, that that just being out in that Colorado town is it's cool. It's kind of it like is. those it movies is. you see, the ski movies and and all That's that. Right. Yeah, it's like it's like that. You know? That's it's, right. It's cool. It's like anyone who grows up east of the Mississippi. You know, you 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 grow up there. You think all the mountains, all the snow, and everything is in the mountains, and then. You quickly realize that East that Colorado's the East Coast of the West Coast. Yes, dude. <laughs> and that's why so many East Coasters end up there, probably, huh? <laughs> totally. Like, there's so many East Coasters in Vail, I'll tell you that. It is oh, the yeah. East Coast of the West Coast. And then and then you Therefore East realize. Coast snowstorms and, and terrain <laughs> and mountain levels. Totally. And then you you know, and that's that's the thing, is you just you realize you're we're like always driving through Salt Lake to get to Tahoe to get to other places or, or whatnot. And then we were like, Yeah, we're we're out of here. We're we're going to Salt Lake. So you moved to Salt Lake? Yeah. And that was ninety five ish? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice dude. Yep. And that is a wild time because you start to realize, like, wow, dude, this is some terrain. Yeah. It Stakes kind of change all of a sudden, huh? <laughs> Just the fact, I mean, that they get multiple two-foot dumps throughout the year. And, you know, whereas in other places, you may only get that, you know, once a year. I mean, Tahoe back in the day used to get tons of snow as well. But dude, that they used was to get nice so much thing. snow. Yeah, they used to get so much snow. But that was the great thing with Salt Lake. It was like a quick flight on freaking southwest to reno Cheap, huh? or or drive or whatnot it was you're, you're just in the central and you're in the hub the hub exactly and the colorado to me when i was there felt like this snowboard hub and then all of a sudden that hub just shifted 
It did. Oh, I mean, it did. Uh, I mean, like back in the day, the early Mac Dog films and just like those guys and Breck and hitting the whales and just hitting yeah. all that stuff. And I mean, the that was that was sick. it. That was that was the scene. And that's was where it you wanted to be. Almost? Yeah, it was like the, some the, stuff. Yeah. Is uh, what was your first video part? Oh man, I think my very first video, like legit one that I got in, was Creatures of Habit Three. Wow, oh, you were in that. Yeah, I had. Damn, uh, dude. I gotta go cue those <laughs> back up, dude. That's cool. In, be- in between aggression and and K two, I was on Kemper nice, for a dude. season, and uh, yeah, then Nate, we just Nate Christensen, we just filmed a handful of uh, rails in on the campus there and whatnot, and submitted them, and they got in, which was which was sweet. I think there was like three or four shots. Those are early days for the rail rail season mission. Dude, those too. were super super early like days. Like the start I mean, of it, basically. Yeah, I mean, you had Hets Hets hitting some rails over by the Santa Fe apartments here in Salt oh, Lake. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that exact spot. Totally. Um, they're they're the, that school is gone. Those rails are gone. But I was gonna say that that might be the first rail I ever shot. Was that that rail? And I think it was Noah Brandon, who's probably not, not a rail rider, but no. props, props to Noah Brandon. Um. And it was a big old crew, like, Zacher let me stand next to him and shoot, I nice. think. But that yeah. was the first real shot, and I was just thinking to myself, dude, where is that thing? It's gone, huh? Yeah. Gone, yeah. but not forgotten. So you you yeah. got some shots and in, in creatures, and yeah. and then where does it go from there? There, you know, got invited on some sn- early snowboarder m- movies. I think Dynasty Sick. was that. And then the next spring, I think, like, the sp- TB5 was my first real part which was a huge dude. huge honor man dude being in the tv movies i mean that's that's pretty much the pinnacle of oh, i mean yeah. it's the top top of the snowboard chain totally of movies and yeah yeah i learned so dope. much working with with mike and his brother and all those guys and yeah pretty it was, sick it was times, awesome. i imagine yeah traveling around a lot and yeah traveling i mean a ton and that's where salt lake was great because it was just like international airport right here we get anywhere super fast super quick small one too so it's so easy right <laughs> right so easy and yeah. we're uh you taught mentioned you're shooting with nate who was uh he was a boss photo boss i mean he's still a boss yeah yeah um we actually have a, a photo of you that nate shot switch method off galena uh pass yeah cap um that's going to be available small limited edition prints that he signed with like 20 of them or something so if you want them, scoop. This is what it looks like. I'll pop it up on the screen. But um, how'd you meet Nate, and where'd that relationship come from? Because I feel like that probably boosted things a little bit because you were getting a lot of mag coverage if you hang with Nate. Totally. Like, oh I yeah. I know when I linked with him, that like helped me out. So <laughs> it's like he was getting it done back then. He was one of the, he was. One of the dogs. He was. We uh, we actually met back in Michigan. He uh, That's right. he's from Michigan. He huh? grew up riding the same local hill, Cannonsburg, that I was riding. And um, a mutual friend heard that I was going to school in Western and that he's like, oh, you got to meet Nate. Nate's going to go to Western. And um, and then, yeah, it just Nate was always into shooting videos. And oh, yeah, like, he's doing videos. Before. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Back in the day, like we had what we called the Michigan video. And it was funny because my buddy Spike McGuire and I road tripped out for nationals and the U S open back in 92. I think that was like the U S open 13. Yeah. And, uh, and it was funny. So we stayed at my friend Jake Ullman's place and like every night, I've heard that name before. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's been around. And, uh, but then back then it was just like, everyone was coming over to that, to his place. And, you know, it was like Chris Swires and just like all these dudes and, everyone partying and uh they it was like every night everyone would make fun of like oh put the michigan video in and they're like and 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 they mix they make so much fun of it but yet they kept putting it back in in. they kept popping it in they kept popping it in and stuff and so it was pretty it was pretty hilarious but like that was like nate's all over monitors early days just like put it in it's so sick hey i want to talk to you guys about moonchild thank you so much moonchild for support Coming on this year, um, kind of blind before I even had a show out, was huge. Really, really carried me through, and uh, very thankful for that, guys. Um, Moonchild is a dope, dope brand. Good people um, that are passionate about snowboarding, just like you and I are. And uh, 
it's funny they they uh, originally one of the shapers and uh, creators of the brand made this board behind me the Malibu um, for one of his for his cousin I think and uh, just wanted to make him a cool custom shape so he made this board and it turns out people were just loving it everyone who got on it loved this board so they were like we're putting this in the line and it became the Malibu they submitted that to uh, White Lines board review. Um, for 2023-24, this bad boy won one of the top free ride boards of the year, and that's huge. You're going in the ring against, you know, the biggest companies out there with Burton and, and uh, you know, Nitro and Solomon, these guys who have years and years and years of R&D down, and, and uh, you know, they've kind of perfected the science. You know, Capita's got the mothership, dude. And all these guys rightfully also have boards in that category that have won awards. But, uh, you know, to sit neck and neck with them is, is a big deal and it just goes to show that this board rips. And if you're looking for a new board, the Malibu is, uh, is the board you're going to want to grab. And it's only from now until the end of the year. So grab one. Uh, you will not be sorry. This board, just look at the shape, man. This board just wants to go. Get that thing in some powder and uh, phew, you're going to have one of those days, one of those days you're never going to forget. Um, check it out, man. I wouldn't steer you wrong. These boards are uh, made top quality by top quality people, and uh, it doesn't get any better than that, man. Support support these guys on the come up, man, because they got big things coming in the future. But the Malibu, Malibu's where it's at right now. Let's go. We got these big corporate sponsors, dude, like Nomi's mugs. These people are, uh, they're good people who make these mugs. They're actually a bunch of uh, gnomes out of... Uh, the uh, continent of Antarctica, I think, that produced these gnome mugs for us. And, uh, you know, it's cool to have gnomes designing products for gnomes, buy gnomes for gnomes. And, uh, what do you see those hands tripping out? Tweak, tweak, tweak. Buy gnomes for gnomes. It's uh, a product that is, like I said, made for gnomes, made by gnomes. And uh, this is Gnomey Mugs. If you, uh, want to support the cause or maybe you just want to wake up and uh, drink coffee or tea out of a really cool mug with a snowboarder on it um ch check out nomimugs.com get the collection going i'm going to be dropping these uh throughout the season and uh just just kind of keep it going and releasing more different styles of of people uh that i've looked up to it's basically myself as a gnome uh Pay an homage to that particular snowboarder that I respected throughout history. And, uh, you know, I never had enough money to get one of those sweet board collections or, or didn't have the focus. I was always getting camera equipment, I guess, and focused on that and uh, don't have a rad board collection. So I thought to myself, now that it's kind of late to get one going, why not collect board graphics another way? And uh, here we go, man. Collect them on cups with uh, little gnomes. Holding them and, and repping that outfit that uh, stuck out to me in the in the time, like J2 and his County Orange, you know, dead long, just looking fresh. Um, the tobogganist holding the toboggan, Big Mike. Um, there's that there's that uh, that board, the race board, the safari. Um, man, back east when like '90s, '89 or something. That was just in Vermont. We were all ripping around on those, and it was a really good time. So. It's just periods of time or riders representing uh, these kits, these fits. Let's go. Um, no me mugs, man. I would, uh, yeah, let's do this. No me mugs. Stoney's Buds Prince was cool enough to, uh, which is me, I guess. Um, we got this Coulter iconic image right here. I mean, I think it's iconic because... It's, uh, it's a spot that everyone gets to see. You're going up the chairlift. Um, and you know what? This chairlift is gone now, but you can see a little bit of the chair right over here. Um, and that is the old Crest chair. They just popped in that new six banger. But uh, back in the day, the old Crest, I was able to shoot this photo of Chris from the lift with uh, walkie-talkies for timing. And... Uh, Man, it was a big dog back then. Not very many people have jumped this. Chris has signed 25 of these. Um, you see his SIG right down here. We got 25 of these. We'll be popping on the website and uh, get them while you can, man. This is this is a dope little image right here. 
But uh, yeah, and you're looking for for imagery of snowboarding, man. It's not just stonies, stony buds. Uh, my site's like e-stonephoto.com, but there's also Andy Wright has a sick site. Um, Blotto's got a dope site. Um, I know that uh, Yoshida's got a dope site. Uh, a lot of your favorite photographers probably have a cool website that they're selling prints from. I'll link the ones I just mentioned in my show notes, but man, they all have such cool images. And uh, getting those on the wall creates a really cool vibe. And I think uh, I know that it stokes us out to know that you are thinking one of our photos is cool enough to be on your wall. Like Andy Wright and I were talking about it the other day. Like, that's a big honor, man, to, to know that, okay, this, this photo that, that Andy shot or I shot is going to be on someone's wall and it's your important personal space, you know, and to create that vibe in your crib. So I think it's really cool, man. And it, um, I know it like getting Yoshi's out there shooting tough, man. Every, every print you buy off his site is uh, keeping him out there another day buying more equipment. Blotto is, is making, I don't know how often he's putting them out now, but he makes these really cool books that, uh, I think like four a year, maybe or something. I might be getting ahead of myself. We'll have to check his website. Um, but the phone book, insane. He he just has some really cool projects. And uh, when you see those drop, man, jump on them because it's it's something special that you're going to want to add to your collection. Um, and like I said, I forget how many is popping out a year, but it's dope. So check out his site. And uh, like I said, I'll link every, every one of these up in the show notes. And uh, yeah, man, support the photographers. Keep them out there in the snow and if, if there's an image that you like man pick that up pop it in your crib create that shred vibe man and uh i know it stokes me out dude when you have blank walls as opposed to lacing them out with some cool stuff so let's go man get these get these prints on the walls man right now dude the midwest has always held it down and as much as the east coasters or the west coasters whatever they want to say that midwest holds holds its own obviously and even back in the day i mean just from right from the get-go there was people killing it oh yeah I mean, you go back to, I'm sure there's before them, but like Roan and those guys. And who's before that? Who's the crews before that? I don't Michigan's know. got that people. Nice. I mean, like Roan and those guys were Minnesota. Yeah, but it's still you know, Midwest. But it, it's still though. Midwest. Yeah. yeah. And there's like Michigan. Well, do you guys get beef between like Michigan and Minnesota? Is no, because like... we had the, we had the lake between us. Yeah, so it wasn't so it was a problem. Like, wasn't a problem. But you weren't no. like traveling to hit each other's stuff or no, compete against each other. I mean, because that was that, that was super far away. I was I was pretty much just hanging out in the mitten. There's a lot of terrain, you know? huh? Yeah, to it's cover pretty far out there. Yeah, it's all a lot. Yeah. To me, it's always just an airplane ride, so I don't know how far it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Detroit, Duluth, and whatever other towns. Totally. I forget. Hancock and and uh, <laughs> I forget what those are. Those two cities that there's tons of hand. Andrews. And Andrews. I forget oh, yeah. what the cities are called, but yeah, good stuff going on yeah. up, up in the mitten. Yeah. The old mitten. I was stoked to see a, a, a recent, you know, rail shot and slush uh, from Grand Rapids. And, nice, dude. You know, I didn't recognize the rail, so new, they're, they're still new. finding new stuff, yeah. which is good. Probably the VG crew or something? or Could be. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like uh, Meyer and the crew, they like to go out that way. Yeah. Find, find some stuff. Yeah, people talk about driving through that. I th- I feel like they found new new spots in the in Grand Rapids and all that. I'm sure. Yeah. So what? Uh, did you actually ever shoot rails back there? We or, did. Yeah. You did, yeah. You did Nate and I. Back. Nate and I. You know, like a handful of times we'd go back for Christmas, and sometimes we'd bring our gear if we knew there was going to be snow, and we'd meet up, hit up, get a rail or two and stuff. But um, and then sometimes if we were just filming, we would just do a trip or two. Yeah. Um, Dude, back then you guys would link up with photogs and just get a photo and not always worry about the video all the time. Sometimes. Yeah. Some it was, it was few and far between, but it <laughs> happened, you know? Yeah. Nowadays it's just unheard of. <laughs> to- totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's such a different, different thing. Now. Well, back in the day it was like, you know, you were like, well, okay, there's no, f- there's gotta be someone. It's yeah. either going to be, we gotta have a photog or a video. Um, and sometimes we wouldn't have a photog. Sometimes we'd just have a video person. Yeah. You now know. that's all you get mostly. Yeah. And like five photographers. For the most part, we'd always try to make sure we had one of each, but didn't always work out. Didn't that always way. work out. You were um part of the Salt Lake as it really I mean when I got here in ninety nine, shit was getting serious around here. <laughs> there was crews. Yeah. It was I mean, it was sweet. Everything was going on. It was pretty funny because um you know, we'd all have like Japanese radios, walkie talkies, so that we wouldn't hear other all the other people out in the backcountry and whatnot. 
but That's the funny sick. thing I is, didn't even think about that. But the funny thing is, is all the other crews, we all had Japanese radios. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear everyone. <laughs> so, so then you just like go scan the channels and just, you know. Kind hear, of hear where they were and yeah, what's going on. And, and whatnot. <laughs> so you <laughs> got a stumblebill funny. then? And yeah. Dude, you were hitting rails, you were sledding, you were jumping. I mean, multi-discipline going all on. Of it, all yeah. of it. All of it. Dude, that's dope. I mean, that's the biggest thing. I just love snowboarding. You know, it didn't, didn't matter if it was big mountain, if it was handrails, if it was park, if it was half pipe, you dude, know. You were in it to win it. Yeah. Dude. I just wanted to do it. Yeah, and I feel like now you get that, but back then it, there wasn't... Now, or now you don't get that. Yeah. And back then people were just hyped. Like, what are we hitting today? Oh, we're going to a pipe. Totally. Oh, we're going to a rail. <laughs> oh, we're going to the backcountry. You know, totally. I thought I had a guest question for me. Oh, I do. I haven't listened to it yeah. from Nate. We're talking about him a lot. There we go. I haven't listened to it. Um, he says, let me know if this question works for you. I can explain the second one. So there's two of them. I mean, we'll just let them roll. All right. And if uh, I could edit it. So, <laughs> so let's just see what he asked. Dude, he even puts a video of himself so I can pop that on the screen. So we're going to throw out both of them and we'll decide which one we're answer. answer All and right. then we'll just edit it up. Okay. Hopefully, I mean, I don't even know. Maybe it's a topic we should have got into, but... <laughs> Whatever, dude. I just feel like we're talking about him. It's good to see his face here. What's up, Ethan? Chris? Nate Christensen here. Chris, we've worked a lot together over the years. I've seen you step up to some crazy rails. I've also seen you point it, switch, down shoots in Wolverine Surf. I was wondering, what's the most scared you've ever been on a snowboard? I have a second question. Chris, did you ever name any of your pet flies? Hope you guys are having fun. Can't wait to see the show. <laughs> Dude, I feel like his question is just right on time, too. You know what I mean? As far as the, I don't know That's about the right. fly one, but like with what we're talking about, I mean, dude, switch wolvie shoot. Switch wolvie shoot, yeah. That sounds scary. Yeah, that was good. That ended up being a Dekine ad, I think, for my signature glove. Dude. Which was, which was dope. Early season, so it was nice and narrow, and yeah. Extra narrow early season before yeah. it fills in. Yeah. You got to point it too, hey? 100%. That's the move, right? <laughs> I mean, because I said that to someone else recently, you know, because they, I guess not not everyone does that. They turn. I was like, I thought you had to point that. Sometimes. But depends switch, how, though, depends, depends how filled in it gets. Yeah. I would be pretty scared to point that switch. Yeah. So, what's the scariest thing you've done then? Is, I guess, his question. I don't know. Probably, I mean, there's rails that are scary. There's flying in Alaska is scary. I but mean, it's scarier I think, to you before we get into the scary moment. I think, I don't know, climbing around on mountains, on peaks. I'm not a mountaineer. Yeah. I'm not a rock climber. So mm -hmm. that's that's always sketchy. I always feel better strapped once I'm strapped into my snowboard. Like yeah. sometimes you'd have to like, you know, you get off on the heli and then you had to like boot pack up to get to your drop in zone or whatever. And I always felt sketched, more sketched hiking up. Until I was strapped in. Um, I agree 100% with that. Yeah. You can like move around a little bit, like comfortably. And when you're not strapped, you're just like, oh, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> like you're going to fall off or something. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I guess that it's like, and I think the first time I ever had a, a, a shot um, from the heli when they were doing a heli shot, you know, and you're like dropping in and then it's like on the radio and there's like three, two, one, the heli's coming around and they've got the freaking doors off and a lot of money's getting thrown around a lot around. of money's getting <laughs> thrown around and it's back when it's film and it's just like you know it's if you mess up like yeah. what happens are these people going to be mad like they're going to be yeah it's just like so the pressure's on totally so that would it's, the pressure would kind of scare you just the, the production of it like well, the production, i got to perform but then, but, I then perform. You're, but then you're on a massive you know alaskan peak and as a as a younger person you know you don't know snow mechanics and you know, you're like, is this going to slide? Is this going to, you know, avalanche? Like, what's going to happen? Am I just going to ragdoll down this thing? You know, so it's like just all those unknowns. I feel like you didn't talk. We didn't talk snow mechanics as much back in the day. <laughs> Do you, you ever think about that? Uh, not so much. But, I mean, we were always just digging digging pits to build kickers. So yeah. We, so we knew we, we could you see. You could what, see weird we, layers. We could see what the snowpack was, where so many people nowadays in the backcountry, no one's digging pits because they're not building kickers. No. So they don't really know what's going on. So we realistically kind of knew what was going on there a little bit. Yeah, without knowing. Yeah. There was always some somebody in the crew who kind of knew more than yeah. others. And 
and they would maybe lead the charge. And then they had guides with you when you're in heliing. Yeah. So is there a particular moment, jump, rail, or line that was stands out to you as like you did it and you were so relieved it was done and because it was really scary? You know, probably the scariest part was, and I'll, I'll take this back to, um, I had just finished out like doing two weeks with standard and with, um, you know, the best guides in the business. And then I were, I was an extra week in Alaska and we were with uh, a different heli operation that wasn't as reputable. And we were like on the snow and I'm just like saying to the guide, I'm like, I don't think this snow is good. And you know, I think, I think it's sketchy and he's like, no, no, it's great. It's fine. It's, it's, it's all good. And then, so we're going down slope and we're shooting some stuff on slope and then the light had come around and there was these spines that looked really sick with the light. So I was like, okay, I'm going to boot pack up and get that. And so I go up and the snow was sketchy and I ended up, um, once I strapped in, it released and it was deep and it was just like, I couldn't self arrest and I was going with this and luckily I was able to get on top and 45 out and the guys below, you know, I yelled down to them and they got out of the way, but the, the slide path went over like a hundred foot cliff or, you know, and Jeez. just like, dude, I was just like, got down to the guide. And I'm like, I was going to say any words, <laughs> any words to the yeah, guy. There, there are some words and wow. Yeah, it was not. I mean, he basically like could have served up your life right there. Yeah. That's was, insane. Yeah. So that was, Dude, in the moment, that was probably one of the more scarier moments. But I, it sounds like you did everything right that you could have done to like escape got from lucky. what could have been a really bad yeah. situation. I don't know. I always say I didn't get better at snowboarding. I just got better at falling. Yeah, true, right? <laughs> <laughs> that I always do tell people as well, like beginners too. Like it's about learning how to fall. Totally, really, to get better because the better you are at falling, you don't get hurt. That's and, and years totally. of shooting with you, dudes. The pros don't get hurt, man. They they'll be in the gnarliest. I mean, they get hurt, but they get hurt. In but general, yeah, but in they general, don't get hurt. you'll see people flying and you're like upside down, and you're like, and then somehow they land on their feet somehow yeah. or whatnot, or just dodge every little thing. They totally. just everything goes right, and it's like, or in the streets especially, it's totally. like it's like miracles happen, but it's just controlled. You guys know how you're falling. Controlled mayhem. Controlled mayhem, exactly. <laughs> and where an amateur can just fall down from making a carve and break their wrist, you know? Totally. And it's, uh, yeah, it's learning how to fall, really, I guess, and getting back up and the repetition of it. So that's interesting you say that. That's funny. Yeah. So in tonight's second question, just, yes, to, give flies, you, just to give you some background yeah. on that one. So this Lord that, of the flies. That goes back to uh, when we were in Gunnison, Colorado. All right. And we were hanging at our buddy Matsai. Our later, we ended up rooming with him and living with him. He's an awesome dude. But being college kids, you're bored. You got nothing going on. I had long hair back in the day. <laughs> How long were we talking? Like before the mop that I was oh, here. Oh, you know, like yeah, okay. like shoulder so like, length. You oh, know, it could have been whatever. an afro had you like <laughs> had you went and got it like turned permed out. Yeah, perm. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Damn, dude, if you got a perm, that would be so sick. A big blonde perm. I did. I yeah. Damn big perm. <laughs> so uh, so right. anyway, with that, it was just like super bored. You're just like I'm, we're like pulling out my hair. And we were like catching flies at my buddy's house, and then oh shit, I've heard putting, about this. Putting in, uh, putting a little noose around the fly <laughs> and holding it with the hair, and so it was like our pet fly. It would fly around, yeah, 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 held yeah. out your and hair then, like and a then, balloon, and, then, and it would fly. Yeah. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> did you name any of them? No. Is that his question? No, no, he did. I don't. I don't think so. Wow, dude, that's crazy. That's I never <laughs> thought about that, dude. That'd be so wild, and they would just. Buzz around. They'd buzz around for a little while, and then they'd be done. And then they just think about what well, they'd be so tired. They just yeah, or they just chill. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Dude, that's wild. <laughs> I remember hearing. Was there footage of this or something? I'm sure we had. Nate had footage. I think I saw at footage some point from or Nate. Another. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> that's that's crazy stuff right there. So uh, I had a question here. I was looking at some notes that you had sent me. Oh. Filming versus contest. Sounds like Ooh. back in the day, that was kind of like a uh, maybe a decision you had to make. Especially you go to the X Games and you you won those two things in one day before the X Games was the X Games, right? So yeah, something like someone like you had to think about, I guess. Contests, yeah, I don't know. I did a lot. I mean, I did contests as well, but it was like I, I think you kind of did contests back in, or at least for myself, it was like you did the contests to get your name out there. Um, 
So then you could eventually like appease just, the sponsors and get the big yeah, maybe just, get the eyewear sponsor that way or something. Yeah, and then or and, a and, and make your name and yeah. then and then and then you know be able to just film. And it do would, the film would be programs. the ending goal, right? But the thing that was always tough with con like contests were cool, like especially in the early days of like slope styles and stuff because it was like you'd be like sick, I can go hit jumps and I can go hit stuff because there weren't really parks in the day back then. No, <laughs> not like there are no. now. Yeah. And so that was super fun. But then it would suck because it's like, oh, you get to practice and you're having so much fun riding this park. And then it's like, you got to stand around and then you take your run and then you make it to the finals. And then you, you know, you get to warm up and then you stand around and then you take a run and you're just like, dude, all I want to do is just ride this park. Yeah. And if you don't <laughs> do well, you've wasted a lot of time. Yeah, totally. I mean, you probably had fun at least with your buddies. Yeah, but it's just like the standing around for contests. That was got that, to you. That sucked. You like to be moving and getting yeah. it done, especially because the park was all sick. So totally. I take it then it seems. I mean, watching your career, knowing it, filming became the the thing. Um, and after you are shooting your five years with uh, the big dogs over over the hatchets. Um, you is that when you went and did uh, robot food? Yeah, then we started we started robot food, and it was kind of our whole crew that we had been filming with with standard with like TB10, you know, David Benedict and Yoni Mackinnon and um, Bobby and Travis and Meeks, huh? Yeah. Travis Parker. Yep, yep, exactly. I mean, dude, you guys like I don't know. I felt like you really turned things upside down with that because <laughs> it just uh, I don't know the fun. You could see that you guys enjoyed each other's company and. The video just kind of like showed a, a different, a less less serious, but serious because the writing was serious and it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. Props to all you guys. How, how was it being a part of that? Oh, I mean, dude, it was amazing, especially early on. You know, it was like, uh, well, that photo that we have of over the Galena the Gap. Switch, I mean, that first year, we had like no snow all of November, and we had like no snow, so like. We went to Costa Rica for Thanksgiving. I remember hearing about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly we get back and it's just like, you know, you land and the phone's blowing up. It's like, where are you? What's going on? You know, and it just dumped and it nuked and it was like the season was on. And I think I got half my part done before Christmas. Damn, it was dude. it was like that good. And that's where the the Galena Summit came in because Corey Smith hit us up and it was like, dude, it just dumped. It's good. You guys should hit the road gap. Smith, and Corey Smith. Too. Corey Smith. There's yeah, two yeah. of them. There's that's the artist. Right. There's the artist from Spring Break, and then there is uh, one who worked at Smith. Both great people. That's right. Funny that there's two. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And he had it locked down over there. He had good terrain, so he kind of eyed that gap up. Huh? He knew it. Yeah, he knew when it was good and all that stuff. And he had probably jumped it before. I'm guessing or no. I don't know if he's uh, ever. He just sent you guys it. off it. <laughs> he just sent us off it. You know, he might have hit it though at, at one he used point. To kill it. Oh yeah. Probably still does. Um. But, but that, dude, that thing's big and scary looking. Yeah, yeah, and it's you got to get on it just at the right times because there's you know the, the snow plows go through and if they throw too much snow off, then there's big snow cookies in the landing. Yeah. And if you don't get on it soon enough, it's like south facing, so then the sun hits it, starts hot melting, pow. hot pile. So yeah, that was that was sick, and that first year was was super fun. I mean, such a good group. I mean, every year was super fun, but yeah. it was also it's also interesting because. Everyone was like a super creative person and everyone was super individualistic. Yes. And it could have blown up at any point in time. Yes. You all could have just <laughs> went nuts and went yeah. your own way and been like, I want to be creative on Yeah, I want to do this. You I guys were all so talented and so creative. Yeah. But uh but you it know, worked. It, it all worked and, yeah. and stuff and, and big props to, you know, you know, Trevor Graves and those guys at Nemo who helped us out in the early days. Those, you know, Jess and Pierre would sit there and, you know, edit in, out of their studio. And, what um, Nemo kind of gave you, like, uh, the image to it, almost the look, the graphic design look? Um, not really. I mean, all that came from, like, David and Pierre and Jess and, 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 and all of us, and then they would just help, like... Put it all together. Sometimes they, would, sometimes they would just help execute, you know? There was yeah. different people. If it was motion graphics or different things like that that's where they would help us take your ideas and yeah and, and bring them to the but for the most fruition. part it was all of us i mean it was all of us shooting it and building it and creating it and all of that sort of stuff and but every now and then there was you know some technical stuff that 
they would definitely help out. Help out with how many vids uh, you guys end up doing? Four or something? Three. Three. Yeah. So we did After Bang, Lame, and then After Lame. And all great movies. All was, great what movies. Was, what, why did it stop? Um, well, that's a good question. I don't know. I think just I really heard at that reason. point, at that point, it's just kind of people went in different directions. Yeah, you know, because like around. at that at that point, David had his ideas. You know that he wanted. You know his vision of what yeah, he wanted he's, with he's with a talented dude films. with a lot going on, huh? Totally running Ger- Germany. I think <laughs> totally. <laughs> dude, I went out to Germany one time with my wife and just bumped into him. It, yeah. was at a, it was at a snowboard premiere. Yeah. But I didn't really know him. But yeah. we were like, oh, what up? And then he took me out on the town with great Sick. night. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great he's, dude. Great he's dude. awesome, dude. Um, I actually want to hit him up, get him on the show, do like uh do it through through the internet, you know? Can't fly all these Europeans the, the out interwebs. here. Interwebs. Yeah. Do it on the web. We got all this technology nowadays. That's right. Why not? So I have a, a pretty big note here that I think we need to address. I've been I've been mulling over a little bit here. Um backside rodeo. Who did it first, E Tree or Peter? Peter Lyme. <laughs> what, what's the deal? Who did it first? What's and I've because I've heard I looked into this a little bit. Yeah, I did a little detective scrolls, some, yeah. some some sleuthing. You did some Columbo work. Yeah, Columbo, if you will. <laughs> do you know who Detective Scrolls is? I do not. A family Guy is just this <laughs> detective that's a scrotum, <laughs> and it has like a detective hat, like Columbo or some shit. It's just, totally. it's just a scrotum with glasses, and they call him Detective Scrooge. But anyways, we'll give, um, we'll give Scrooge. Yeah. One of those. So the backside rodeo. So that um, I did it in TB five. Documented. Uh, documented. First one uh, ever. I mean, first one I ever did. I learned it up on um, up on. Teton Pass in Jackson. Grand Tetons. And, uh, that's right. And uh, it took me like two years because I had that trick like in my mind, but it was just so unnatural and so different that it took forever. And then finally it just clicked for me up there. One day we were hitting a jump in the back country on, uh, up on the pass. And, um, and then a little while later did it again and on a NFA clothing shoot up in with Scott Surface. Up in Whistler. What, what year was that first one? Oh, uh, that would have been ninety five. Ninety five. Damn, dude. And um, and yeah. When? And then and then we were up at Hood like that. That was my first year that I got to film with Standard and ah. did a did like a stint in the in the spring with Mike up in Sonora Pass. And then uh, I think it was Rich Van Every was up filming at Mount Hood, and Kevin Jones and I were hitting a a, a booter at. Wendell's KJ. and I was just like, I need something. Yeah. KJ. Um, and I was like, I need something for my part that people are going to rewind the, the vid. And so Dude, then that's a rewinder right there. Yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, and I did it and I actually, when I originally learned a trick, I learned it to 540, but this time I went bigger and I actually did it to seven. And, uh, and, and it was then, at Wendell's and it was at Wendell's. So and people then, could be peeping your tapes. They, they, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So a lot of people probably don't even know what that means because yeah. they don't even know if there's tapes these days. But we're just watching them, seeing what he's doing. That's you're, right. you're up at Hood, people are watching. Uh, people are watching. I, I bet. I think Burton had like scouts these back then, <laughs> dude, looking looking for tricks and what's going what's on. What's going on? What's happening? Yeah, or or like just rumors on the glacier travel. You know, one hundred percent. Or, or uh, up on the that thing's a volcano. Is it a glacier and a volcano? Both. It's a snow field. What? What's the difference? There are glaciers. Yeah. But the Palmer snow, Palmer snow field is because it's not growing. Yes. Um, it's just that it melts and oh. replenishes and then melts and replenishes. So it's technically so it's that. So that's so that side. But in between Timberline and Mount Hood Meadows is actual glacier. And glacier yeah. grows is what you're saying? I guess. Or moves. Or moves. Got you. you. Know. So it's just they get so much snow, it stays on there? Yeah. That's crazy because it's yeah. that's really wild. It seems like... It would yeah. just heat up and disappear. Yeah. Wow. So, thanks, thanks for a little tidbit. The more you know. That's right. Um, <laughs> if yeah, there's anything so. people take away from this podcast today, it's a snowfield. <laughs> um, but, so uh, what's the other side of the story then? So then... I feel like I should almost uh, call Peter and see if he wants to drop a word on it, but he probably right. doesn't remember. He's probably just like, oh, no, oh, whatever. I'm sure, I'm sure he does. <laughs> He's like, but he won't remember. But, <laughs> and then he and then he came out, and then I saw him doing it the next summer over at High Cascade, and they were filming for Dogger. And then, of course, he was doing it with way more style. I you know I'm a big tall, lanky, I'm a big tall lanky yeah. guy, 
he's short and stylish and you know he put way more style to it and, and it came out then that year the so next maybe year in dogger's flick ah so it's like um, the old if a tree falls in the woods did it fall anyone see it <laughs> if it if it fell with the right style i guess all of a sudden it's right, remembered right. a certain way yeah yeah but still dude you, it's not like yours looked whack or something yours was sick so he's Thanks. just he's just peter he he's definitely peter, had a unique yeah. style about totally. him. Totally. It's it's uh I feel like you were a you were from a time before they got gear dialed in properly for your tall self. <laughs> can we say <laughs> one, it like that? You can say that one hundred percent. Because yeah, it wasn't built right for tall people. And any, I remember talking to a lot of tall people, they just like were bummed because the arm Blotto, Blotto has wicked long arms. Totally. Dude. He like he would always we both rode for six eight six. He notes always were just like, dude, longer arms, longer arms. You're throwing your arms around. Funny, <laughs> funny, funny fact. When I was riding for 686, I'd always have to. Oh, you rode for 686 too? I did, yeah. I think and, I knew uh, that. I knew that. Yeah, but uh, that was uh, like later on in the career, but uh, I'd always have them send me two pairs of pants. And then I'd cut like the bottom six inches no. off <laughs> of one pair and sew them on <laughs> so, <laughs> so that they would be long enough That's for me. so sick, dude. <laughs> the custom. Yeah. And they wouldn't just, the, the brands just weren't. I guess it was too hard for them to just do that for the riders. Or they I mean, uh, well, at that they didn't think tall people snowboarded or something. No, and then eventually they started making. Yeah. Like, oh, wait a second. It was just like the Fat Bob. You know, it was like, wait, there's people with wider feet. Yeah. Like, or like, oh, women snowboard. Let's make women's gear. Totally. It's all totally, the same. You know, but it's just the evolution of the sport exactly. and the technology. One hundred percent. But yeah, so maybe that is a played into it because the yeah. had you had your right kid as you got later on. Totally. It would have, uh, but I don't know. So yeah. it went. It went on that Peter was the first dude to do that. Is that the deal, or is it just a debate that still goes on? Is, I think it's a debate. Love it, still. dude. Love it. So it sounds to me like uh, you did a full year earlier, and it's documented. So I'll have to go back and look at some footage and do a little sleuthing, Detective Scrodesville, sleuthing, yeah, and see see think, what goes on. Know, but Pat, that's Pat, interesting. Pat Moore shit. did a, did a good uh, post. He did a while ago, I'll a couple think, years, a couple I'll years call ago. Call up Pat Moore. Yeah. And uh, see what he has to say about it, and then maybe Bridges. He always likes to, he always likes to add something. Always, of course. But who knows what he'll say? He'll he'll remember it and be like, <laughs> "You were there. You were there, right, Stone? You were there." And I'll be like, "I don't think I was there." Oh, you were there. <laughs> All right, I was there. <laughs> he does that to me a lot, which is always 100%. awesome. But that's cool, dude. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. And uh, and you know, on in Peter's behalf, he probably was. People were probably like, "Dude, this new trick. That's the first thing." And what's he gonna do? Be like, "Ah, sure, sick." <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty rad. Because I remember like. Kevin Jones had a, in, something go on with a trick, and it was similar. And he said some guy showed up to his house or something and was like, I did. I don't remember what trick it was. What, the chicane or something he, like something that? Something like that, maybe? yeah. And he showed up at his crib and was like. <laughs> calling him out yeah, about like, it? Calling him out. It was either like his buddy <laughs> had done it first, and yeah. he was super mad, or he had done it first, and he was super mad. And KT was just like, I don't know, man. I've showed it. My shit showed up. And so yeah. what are you going to do? It's <laughs> totally. like, whatever, whatever yeah, happens, yeah. happens. But that's yeah. pretty sick. If, if you were the first one and it sounds like you were the props too, that's amazing. Cause that was an important time in snowboarding where things were really changing. And, uh, I think that and, really and, added to those movies back then. And your guys parts is just like, she was getting real new and exciting. Totally. And I mean, it's like Mike Bassich said something to me, you know, like he's like, dude, back in the day, he was like, just thinking about a 720. He's like, you'd never seen anyone do a 720 before. He's and like, until you saw someone do a 720. And then he's like, oh, all right, we can, you know, then you can do Yeah, this. and then it clicks, and then everyone's going to totally, next year. Totally. Dude, it's crazy how that works. It's like with kids skateboarding now. Yeah. You know? <sighs> it's like thinking of just a kickflip back in the day was bonkers, you know? Bonkers, yeah. <laughs> and then even when, like, the guest I had with him in here, like I yeah. asked him that question, like, what was it like? And he was just like, it was just the same as it is now, but for them, they've seen it all. So it's like, yeah. for him, it's doing the backside air, you know? Totally. And they were just emulating, oh, surfers can do this. And so let's emulate it. And not that they were airing at that time, but a lot of stuff they were doing, totally. they're just emulating that. Yeah. yeah. And, in, and now it's like, oh, well, one homie can go 30 feet out in the pipe. So I can go 30 feet out or 25, totally. whatever they're doing. Yeah. yeah. It's nuts how that works, and I guess that's just progression. And and uh, but where does it end? I guess is the is the question that we'll have to find out soon. We'll find out. Yeah, because in rails, it's almost like we hit it, and then it backed off a bit. Um, maybe mm -hmm. more, maybe less technical, but the bigness pulled back. I don't know. Yeah, 
or maybe even the te- I think, I, I the think every, everything goes in waves. Yeah. You know, it's like style kind of pushed out and took over. Yeah. Different things. And then you just, or like they're not combine. getting paid enough to jump off a building. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude? <laughs> right. They start th- rethinking things. Yeah, dude. Cause it's, you were from a time when it was a lot easier to hold down a career, I think. And, uh, I mean, you were a big pro, but there was a lot of dudes that were, weren't as big as you that were still holding down careers. Um, and now it's like, it's tough. It's like, there's that level up here and then it's in between. These guys aren't making a lot of money. So it's totally. crazy the way it's going. Totally. Um, well, and I think it was, I mean, it was a lot cheaper to live back in the true. day too. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and we could so just you could, you move could get out. By, and, you yeah. Know? You could get by easy. Right. And now it's like rent high, like just getting your food is tough. So I guess that's a different <laughs> thing too, One hundred percent, dude. Props though on that. That's pretty sick, dude. You, uh, how many video parts all together? We looking at that like 15, 16? Probably more than that. More Probably than that. More like thirty. I bet. Woo, thirty when you put them on because multi when you, videos yeah. some years. And... Yeah, because like there would be like dude. I'd always like jump in with like Whitey and oh, a that's day true. or two and get a couple shots in, you know, in his flicks. And, yeah, so you'd pop you in. You know, there'd be this and that, and then it's just like you go to Europe in the summer, and then you end up in a Europe yeah. European flick. You don't even something. know you're shooting for him, <laughs> <laughs> and then it shows up. <laughs> totally, or or like guys shooting random stuff at Mount Hood during the summer. You know, it's like there's, yeah, there's there's she always goes a on. lot, but yeah, the main the main focus was always like standard films or robot food or or whatever stuff like that. You know, getting that done. Yeah, and it looks like throughout the the bulk of your career, your main sponsors were K two Dragon NFA. Northwave, Drake, Kind, six eight six, and then you made a move from K two to Elevation, um, and you talk about um, Bert Lamar. He kind of played an instrumental role, right? Um, I mean, and for the people that don't know, Bert is a true true legend, man. He was out riding what in the eighties, mid eighties, I guess. Yeah, he, he was on that, he was on the first that early, trick stick, early is that what wave, it's called? the trick stick. Yeah, his board had a really cool shape. I think totally. he just copied like Tony Hawk's six skateboard. Or that the was Hosoi. Oh, the Hosoi. The Hosoi. <laughs> make make my know. board look like this. I actually heard a rumor that that's what he did, and it, I it came out sick. Totally. And he was, you know, he came from skateboarding, and it showed in his riding. And um, teaming up with a legend like that must have been really cool. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was funny. We actually met through uh, finger snowboards. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> totally. He. Uh, um, he had sold Lamar snowboards and he was had a non compete, so he couldn't, you know, do another snowboard company. So he found a toy company that wanted to do finger, you know, signature finger snowboards. Oh, so he was kind of involved in making that happen? Yeah. Damn, and I gotta so get him out on this on this show, dude. Oh, one hundred percent. So then like Are you him still tight I, with him? I haven't talked to him in a handful of years, but Bert, if you're listening, let's do this dog. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, then we just kept in contact, and then finally his non compete was up, and sick. He was just like, "Hey, what's going on with K two? Blah blah blah." And you know, then I was had been with K two for a long time. Yeah, you ten know? years, like dude. 10, yeah, and um, you know, Scary at that point, to move from them. Um, no, it wasn't. I mean, it would have been great to stay with them as well, but um, nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever, and I was at a point in my career to when I was like, I knew like my snowboarding career was going to come, was winding down, so it's like, what's my next phase? And yep. so it's like, could I be a, a partner in a brand and help build that? And so that's where the opportunity came along with Bert to do Elevation. And, um, I mean, it was pretty sweet, right? out. Of, but it, the crappy thing is right out of the gate our first year, it was, uh, we were going to market, and it was September 11, you know, 9-11 to bombing the terrorist attacks ah. on on the twin towers in oh, new york wow. city so that just uh threw a curveball into our plan and just, just kind of slowed it all down yeah and um but yeah it was i mean it was a super super good experience um how long did that all go that for? was that was like three years and then i bailed because i just saw it wasn't gonna succeed at that point um Bert tried to make it run for another year after that, and then then it just shut down. And then it shut down. You know, with Elevation and what happened with that, it was like 
So right out of the bat, you know, 9-11, Twin Towers, you know, terrorist stuff. Not not good. Um, not good at we all. Were, we were, but we were, the big thing that kind of just put us into a tailspin was we were producing our boards out of Taylor Dykema down in San Diego. Oh, wow. Um, and so, you know, which was great. They were just down the road from us. Um, and, you know, those guys did great stuff. And they were also producing, you know, at that point, a ton of the skateboards no as shit. well. They had another factory that was doing the skateboards and then they had the snowboard, you know, building and, um, it was Taylor Dykema and I forget who it was. I think it was like Dykema. One of the guys had been just living in Cabo for <laughs> years. <laughs> really? So he was just like an absentee owner of the business. Damn. And then eventually he was got over partying in Cabo, I guess, or, or whatever, just living yeah. in Cabo life. And he came back and wanted to be a part of the business. And Taylor Dykema basically imploded in basically a year. Dude. And suddenly we had to like scramble to find, you know, another manufacturer because it was like sample season. So that was like, we got like, yeah, the guys that option to make were, our were samples. Were you like an owner? Uh-huh. I didn't know that, yeah. dude. This deepens the conversation. <laughs> as you... Because as you got into it, I, I thought maybe as like a rider. So you were you were up in this thing. Totally. Was yeah, Coulter yeah. as well? No. No. No, just, Bert, so, just Bert so and I. You and Bert and became then, partners. Yeah, we so, were partners. And then there was the, you know, real money guy um, that he, you know, had found. And, and you don't want to get your like money that. in there, dude. That's, that gets real <laughs> sketchy. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's uh, so then we were just scrambling. And then ever since Taylor Dykema went that you know, imploded with those guys. Yeah. We were just scrambling from like factory to factory to factory and we would deli- we would ship late. And so then we would lose a couple of retailers and then, you know, and so like every year just so something would happen where we would ship late and lose a couple more doors, lose a couple more doors. It's, it's like this, this snowball effect. Totally. Yeah. And eventually the, you lose so many doors, you're like, ah, what are we doing? Totally. And then do those doors even pay the bills after? <laughs> right. It's just such a such an uphill battle. Yeah, one hundred percent. And so that was, and that was kind of you know being an owner in a company was a goal of mine. You know, it was like the next step after snowboarding. For real. You know, it's like what's next? I'm still gonna have to pay the bills and and all that sort of stuff. So. So as that started to wind down, what was the next step? After snowboarding. <laughs> I mean, this is a big. Big conversation for everyone because it's 100%. like, where do you go? Your identity has been tied up for you, what, 15 years? Yeah. Your yeah. identity's wrapped up in this 15-year um, pro snowboarder mentality with travel and living this really unique life, and it's uh, it's a real kick in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. It's like it was crazy because, you know, after that whole elevation thing, I was pretty much just like, I don't want to do anything in snowboarding again because I don't want to be in a one quarter business. Um, you know, Dude. you think you think you have all this time in the world to, you know, get everything planned, get everything shipped, get everything done on time, and then suddenly the factory catches on fire and your inventory goes up in smoke or something like that, you know, and it's like and so then after and nothing s- you did. Nothing that's, that's yeah. the worst part. Totally. It's not like you messed up at yeah. all. Yeah, exactly. And so then... Um, and if it doesn't go on fire, it like a truck gets stolen. I've heard that happen to people. <laughs> They're sure. at SIA, SIA with all their samples and someone steals their truck. And like, it's like anything can happen. That's Any, gonna, yeah. And it always does. Yeah. And count on it. It's going to happen. And you basically have one quarter to make your money and all of that sort of stuff. So, you know, kudos to all the people that have made it and <laughs> make it work and real. make it all happen. <laughs> It's uh, it's it's huge. It's, it's huge. Yeah, the fact that you pull that <laughs> off, and and not to mention, dude, it's like you have till Christmas. You got to get your stuff in there earlier than you would think. You know, late August, let's say. Yeah. Good job, pug dog. Just just getting through those those <laughs> all wires. those cords. So you got to get all your your stuff in there to store because it's not there by Christmas. It's like all the shops just lost their window. It's like. Totally. It's the big the big guys will like dock you basically and want money back and it's just such a it's such a tough thing. So you're totally. smart. You're like, 
I don't want to put my eggs in this in <laughs> totally. this basket. It was fun as a pro. Yeah. Um, so then I started uh, Inkjet Lab, which was crazy. Sick. Which was completely outside of snowboarding. And the crazy thing is I went from like 200 days a year snowboarding to, I think I did two. Whoa. The next year. For how long? Because I was, I mean, a year and a half. Yeah. Um, cause it probably I almost just, felt good on your body. <laughs> a little reset. <laughs> yeah. And I just went deep into this whole printer cartridge remanufacturing company down in, in Vista. And, and what, what made you go... Go that explain route. what it was, I guess, for the people who uh, don't know. So back in the day, well, I mean, you can still buy inkjet cartridges. You can still buy laser toner cartridges. Um, we were an aftermarket business, and we had a store. So people, you and I, could go into the store and get discounted it's off, way cheaper off, than off the, brand than the normal than brand. HP or uh, any of that sort of stuff, and loved it. And um, well, I thought it was a good idea. Yeah. And and it and it that still was and, and, yeah. and it was and it was great and I got it built up and it was going to be potentially a franchise business and, and all this sort of stuff and then where were you located uh, in Vista California Sick. like literally right next to the DC uh, offices and, nice. and whatnot and right next to where actually the um, California or the Carlsbad pipeline the old Carlsbad skate park was and Ooh. then um, were you skating a bit uh, back then I was still skating. Yeah, it's um, tough as, as you get on. You got to like really stay on it. <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> yeah, concrete's hard when you when you slam. <laughs> Doesn't get any softer. Nope, it does not. <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, I did that for about a year and a half, and then Snowboarder Mag was looking for uh, a new publisher, um, and then my name came up, and they hit me up, and if I was interested, and I was like, you know, I like snowboarding a lot more, and I like printer cartridges. Yeah. So sometimes it's nice too not to have it all on your back if you know because that was your business. It was. Yeah. It totally was. You just have a job and get paid and go home at the end of the day and not right. not have to like stay up all night sweating about it, <laughs> <laughs> thinking totally. about the bills. Totally. And so I made that transition. And, and so for the people that don't know, what exactly does a publisher do? So the publisher, I mean, there's multiple different titles: publisher, general manager. Um, you're basically kind of running the ship. So you're, you're in, boss you're, man. Yeah, you're in charge of making sure the money's coming in, making sure you're not spending too much money, making sure you got the right team in place and all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it was awesome. Great. It's a big job. Great. Yeah. There's like one of the, there's two mags that were kind of running the scene in the U.S. at that time, or maybe future pop. There was for four. A bit. Four? Uh, uh, there was four who, at that point. Who because, was it? Well, because it was Transworld, it was Snowboarder, it was Future. Oh, that's right. And, and it was Snowboard. Crazy. So it was the four of those guys, yeah. and, and as as Bridges likes to say, you know, back in the day, it was the salad days. The salad you know, days. days. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does the salad days mean? I You're like, know. it was you can afford a salad before your meal. I mean, what, <laughs> what does it even mean, the salad days? <laughs> we'll have to ask. Them, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna know? Google that real quick while we're here because is that like a phrase? Well, that's totally a phrase. It is. <laughs> I don't know the exact meaning. What's the, what's the it etymology the of it? Yeah, you know? what's the deal, dude? Um, well, as as you looked that up, yeah, but it was like a good. <laughs> as you looked a, that up, <laughs> it was a good team. You know, it was just like good, good times, good stuff. I mean, dude, it was awesome, man. I mean, yeah. I was there as a photographer, which is yeah. kind of out of the loop from the internal madness. But you had a crew, and a crew the mag was and, doing great things. Yeah. But I mean, the photographers, everyone, it was like family. Yeah, it was awesome, you know? dude. It we, was. We got to go. On those uh, the editorial meetings, dude, where oh, the yeah. shit that was before they took yeah, those was... away. I think <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple. You were down there when yeah, we went to dude. Baja, weren't you? Yeah, oh was yeah, awesome man. Yeah, um, great times, dude. Yeah. And it's like a lot, it's a lot of responsibility. How was that going from? I mean, you were running your own business, which I'm sure get, helped you on your your resume getting that job. Sure, but your pro snowboarder is a lot different than coming in and like running a being a publisher. I mean. I feel like pro snowboarder though really sets you up with a lot of skills yeah. to go out there and conquer, you know? Yeah. I Please mean, not it's, take no for an answer. <laughs> as much as, as, yeah, 100%, you know? And it's like, I think back in the day, it's, it's different now because most, lots of people have agents and whatnot that take care of all their stuff. Yep. And for us, you know, it was like, you did all that stuff. And, um, I don't know. It's just, you know, kind of in my DNA, you know, it's like I was, before I even had E-Tree clothes and was doing that stuff, I, you know, my buddy and I, Tom Tilton, we had TC skateboards 
and we were making skateboards as like 11 year old kids and selling them, trying to sell them to neighborhood kids and whatnot, you know, little did we know that there was town and country <laughs> skateboards. Really? You know? I was thinking, I'm like TC, like that sounds familiar. Yeah. It was your little mm-hmm. business. Totally. We were, luckily we didn't, we didn't get a, a lawsuit from them. You know, we were a little too small, but. Uh. <laughs> Dude, so salad days is a Shakespearean idiom referring to a period of carefree innocence, idealism and pleasure associated with youth. There we go. But there's uh, there's more to it because it kind of went Urban Dictionary is uh, has its own put its own little slang on it. But it's first used by Shakespeare and Anthony and Cleopatra in my salad days when I was a green in judgment. I guess so. That's referring to when you're young, you know. Yeah. Um, but now it comes up to. Uh, Let's see here. I think the, the the British might have put this this new twist on it, um, where it refers to. Let's see here, because I just just had this here. A period in time which hardships are few and life is comfortably lived, but also a stretch of time where a person spends in county or state prison. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, I guess one's easier than the other. So the the salad days are your word doing that easy time. I uh, see. <laughs> Dude, Bridges is smart, dude. <laughs> that's for you, Pat. There we go. <laughs> so you're back in Utah, dude, and that's pretty rad that you're here. You, you liking it? Liking life then? Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Easy, 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 good, good. I don't know. I think Utah's pretty dope. It's good outdoor living. Like yeah. I say, we're in the hub of the West. Hub of the West, dude. That's right, man. Is that what they're calling it? That's, 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 what, the, calling that's what the kids are calling it. <laughs> that's what the kids are calling it, dude. <laughs> the hub of the West. What else? Yeah. I guess what else would be the hub? Denver? Well, no, that's not the hub of the West. That's the East Coast of the West that's Coast. That's the East Coast of the West Coast. Okay, Denver, Colorado, East Coast yeah. of the West Coast, so we're the hub. That's right. Love it, dude. I love being part of the hub. That's right. It's it's a beautiful place to be in. That's uh, right. I, I was stoked getting out of those mountain towns to a real life eventually. Not a real life, <laughs> but just it's so like surreal there, you know? It is. You come here, it and is. it's like, okay, we're in a real city. There's people. There's There's girls. There's... That's right. Airplanes that you don't have to be all crazy and plan six hour or four hour drive. There's, and there's other groups of people that yeah. you want. Yeah, stuff, you don't have you know? to have only for, your only friends are snowboarders or ski people. Totally. Yeah. yeah. But you're kind of up in the zone, I guess, though. Or it's like almost a mountain town. It's close, but it's so close to here. Yeah, but it's not. It's not like Jackson, or it's not like yeah. that, you know, because it's like it's a commuter. Commuter. Commuter city to where it's like, it's not. It's like a mountain town, but it's not. Yeah. You're not, you're not like fully, I mean, like Jackson, you're up there. It's like awesome town, but like it's four hours to get here. Dude. And yeah. if you want to go to Moab, it's another three and a half, four hours. You know, it's like no shoulder seasons are long up there. A little real long. And it's getting real <laughs> packed up there too. Oh, 100%. Um, and I guess we both have dealt with this. Um, we both lost siblings recently. Um, my sister to cancer. The bummer, it was like right during COVID and all that, so I couldn't even go see her. But uh, you have had a brother that dealt with alcoholism, huh? I don't yeah. know if, if you want to talk about it or not. I know it's a hard thing for you like a year and a half ago. Yeah, no, it's um, I'm fine to talk about it. It's, uh, you know, it's it's tough. My brother, he was four years older than me. Um, and Four years. Four years. My brother's exactly four years, too. Yeah. yeah. And he uh, he struggled. He was an alcoholic from you know, for decades, basically since he was 18 and, you know, just drinking all the time. And, um, it was, it was, it was tough. It was hard. Um, I mean, he tried so hard, went to rehab and detox and everything so many times and just trying, but just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't do it. And yeah, he passed away a year and a half ago, which was, was pretty sad. And he had some pretty, close times to when he almost passed away before that. So I was able to see him beforehand and spend, you know, some, some time with him, which was, which was great. It's, um, but it's, it's tough when they pass away and addiction is, is a, is a, it's, it's tough, man. It was the family. Like you guys were, everyone knew about it, obviously. Yeah. Like your parents yeah. and, yeah. and you guys were all kind of there helping them and, and letting them know, as as much as we as much as you can yeah and as much as they have to want it you have to want 100%. it one hundred percent that's like, what they tell me at at the rehab spots like if if you don't want it like don't come here you're taking a bed from someone that that might die tonight like you're one hundred you need to give that spot up if you don't want it and 
yeah, you have to want it. And it's it's hard, dude. People don't realize that you can't just, a lot of families members are just like, why can't you just stop? You know, it's like, it's, it's just, it's a disease, man. It's totally. 100%. And I don't know if it's like through your family line or where it comes from. Yeah. It could be way back. We don't even know. Cause they, they talk about that being a thing now. Yeah. It's like, you know, I, I was fearful, you know, like early on, I was like, Oh man, could I be an alcoholic as well? And, but it's like, I don't have those tendencies and it's like, the yes, last- I've been out drinking with you. You don't seem like, <laughs> you don't like that big problem. Starter. I, I was always on the casual sipper yeah. uh, Paps Bowl team. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. But I guess you never know, though, because some of those people, but, they end up going home and drinking in the morning or something, and totally. you just never know. It's because it's on yeah, the down low. But the, for me, yeah, I was never, that was the last thing I ever wanted to do was grab another drink. You know? Was it because like, you more, saw him drinking when he was older? Maybe. When I was, like, growing up as a kid, you know, like, he was four years older than me, so then just, I, I don't know if that was the case. Um it was just something like I just never drank in high school or yeah. anything like that until, you know, I was like older um, out in college and stuff. So and it was just casual. Yeah. And it was, you know, and it was what it was. But I mean, good thing is, is I don't have that yeah. addiction. You know? Your parents like, never. My parents never did. No, my parents got married like super young, you know, like straight out of high school and. They had, had to raise a fam. Had to raise a fam, so yeah. they didn't have that that luxury to, you know, party, party and stuff. So it's it's crazy. I think a lot of people don't know, and I learned this also in in the rehab spot. Um, dude, alcohol can take its toll fast if you're drinking a lot. Like yeah. I met some people that, dude, they were like, fuck, they were like 21, and they had drank so much already that their like bones were dying, and they wow. had to like. They were gonna have to maybe get a leg amputated. Wow! Because the bone, you can drink your bones to death, basically. Crazy. And if they didn't turn it around, they were gonna have to lose a leg, and they had to get a hip replacement. And it's just, it's crazy, dude, how fast it can take its its toll. And yeah, and it's wild that it's this thing that's a, a big problem for alcoholics. Dude, you quit, and even if you're in rehab, you know they bring you out of there to go grocery shop or something. You pass like three alcohol. Places you can buy alcohol, you can buy it everywhere, and it's just like, dude, it's it's setting people up because it's it's like money first and right. Well, and then after. you know, and like he was living in Michigan, and it's you know, COVID hits, and you can't go to AA meetings in person anymore, dude. And suddenly, you know, it's like it's not the same going to AA meetings over Zoom, and then not at all, right? Not at all. That's and about the community, and like they hug each. It, like when I go there, like dude, you're hugged, and yeah. Um, was he active, active with, before that? Like with active AA? with the with the AA community? Yeah. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And you know, and he was at, at the time he was living in Ann Arbor, Michigan at the time, and I mean, an amazing you know facility, you know, support system there with all the different social services and everything um, to help and like bus routes and all that sort of stuff. But then of course it's like COVID hits and they make it legal to do alcohol delivery i mean it's well, like the just, worst worst thing ever you for an dial alcoholic. it up like you're ordering pizza 100 percent, you know dude you could just order and have a gallon of whiskey delivered to your house you know it's like that's hard. psycho yeah they don't do that stuff in utah i don't think i don't think so yeah it's, well actually they probably do it's probably, probably an under do. It's, probably, it's probably an underground network yeah too there probably <laughs> too, there probably is one huh like on a, an app that's like who even knows totally but dude so there they were just straight yeah, you get depressed, which you're just depressed because you said he lived alone, right? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, you're just depressed. You live alone. Like, yeah. And I talked like, to people that were extremely up people that live alone and COVID hits and they're depressed because what are you going to do? You're like bouncing totally. off the walls. You're alone. Totally. You make it through the summer. Yeah, and you order a handle. In, then it goes into winter and it's dark. Especially and, there, huh? Yeah. Cold, dark. Yeah. yeah, winter hits and stuff. And so that was that definitely sent him you know, down, over the deep oh, end. Yeah. Over the deep end, you know, just kind of for his health at yeah. that point in time, it was like, and he was to the point to where, you know, he couldn't drink. He didn't necessarily die from alcoholism. Um, he was on thyroid medication and he actually died of hyper hypothyroid, hypothyroidism. Mm. Um, and actually had a, went into a coma and damn. Yeah. And went that way. And went that way. So, but, but it, it's, his cause it's still was tough. from. He had that 
chance. I think you mentioned to me, like they said, you got to stop now or else 100%. it's going to become a problem. Huh? Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's easier said than done. Exactly. It's like you can't. I don't have any answers, you know. Yeah. I've, I've watched. Not, a, you I've don't watched just snap a, your fingers and yeah. it's like it's gone. It's like ing- it's it's something that's so and, deep. And he knew it, um, as well, you know. And and he was he was trying. He was, but it's hard. It's that's really the thing. Hard. Yeah, at least he was trying. And yeah. Um, man, I'm sorry if you're lost, dude. That sucks. Thanks. We'll give him a great big air horn in the sky. I appreciate it. Sucks, it. dude. It's it's just tough because like we were talking. You'll have these moments. You're driving in your car or whatever. You just want to call them, and you can't. You know, you. Right. I got to the point for a little bit. Like you pick up your phone, and you almost. I'd look for my sister's number, and yeah, they'd be like, "Oh shit, I can't call my sister." I, I mean, and that sucks. I still have his number in my phone. Yeah, me too, <laughs> dude. Me too. I got you know? so many people's numbers in the phone. It sucks. You know, it's like on your speed dial list, and yeah. you just can't go to remove it yet you know it's, it's i don't think i'm gonna remove them dude you know what i yeah. mean why not i guess no yeah i wonder if the messages are still there can you call in here that i don't know but it's like well, i don't even i never even thought of that actually like still have j2s in there and right whoever um i don't even know how many but that that sucks dude it's just a it's a battle and i'm sure he did his hardest and it's just you're just in that spot dude and i think covid did that to a lot of people it just pushed pushed people just that step further that right that just over the edge over the edge like, yeah it was tough yeah and whether it, maybe it wasn't even alcoholism it could just be depression in itself right and and covid pushed those people covid pushed businesses over the edge it's really when you start to like cruise around in different areas and talk to people it, it really had a major effect on people that you maybe didn't think about at first it's just gnarly man it so was. uh i guess everyone who who came through the other end is stronger for it businesses are stronger for it but gnarly time dude totally i kind of worked at home anyways before that so for me it wasn't this big change and so maybe i didn't realize it as much and, totally yeah and then you talk to like artists all of a sudden they can't have their their galleries that they had and totally business owners can't fill their the restaurants so it's just it's just tough yeah. and then they get they're like oh how can we still make people buy alcohol and drink like oh, we'll make it so you can <laughs> how can this get it delivered and, yeah how can yeah, the restaurants still make yeah, money you we're know? gonna deliver like, more and it's like damn dude just it's all comes down to money, but yeah, that sucks, dude. Bomber, if uh, people are struggling with that, man, I'll I'll uh, put the a uh, uh, number and some resources, and you know, reach out, talk to people. There's uh there's help, and you gotta want it, like we're saying, man. So rehab, actually, like I said in my episode, it's it, it's covered by insurance, which is insane. I never knew that, and uh, I talked to some people in there that went through it like ten times, man, like. If you use your uh, what, what the the deductible or whatever, dude, just keep going if you have to. Right. Stay in there for six months if that's what it takes. It's actually kind of nice in there once you get used to not having your phone. You feel like <laughs> a little kid again, you know, and like you're learning all these rad things and you're you're doing uh, yoga and just eating. They're cooking for you and you're like doing your chores as a chore board. You know what I mean? Right. Once yeah. you get once you like surrender to it, you're just like, dude, this is dope. You're like, it's easy. And Someone's then they release you back on the world, or, though. They release yeah. you back into the world, and it's not easy. So stay in there, man. Just, just do what you got to do until, until, until you're ready. You, yeah, until you're ready, man. Just And then even there, they can send you to that, uh, like, uh, the sober living and all that kind of stuff. Just go through the steps. But not yeah. everyone's going to make it, man, and, and it sucks. It's a disease. Yeah. But, yeah, to all the people struggling, I think we laughed. We uh, talked we laughed, about some serious we, stuff. We laughed. Yeah. We cried. I had a the tear, thing tear pop in. <laughs> since, since cats. Exactly, dude. I actually saw <laughs> and, cats. And, and, we, and we learned what salad days Dude, were. salad days, snowfield. Like, we're learning, dude. That's right. I always thought Pat made that up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no way, man. He's, he's, he's too on top of it. He is, too. And he's like the type of dude who probably read Shakespeare in high school or something. He's a pretty smart, well-read dude. Oh, he, he is. It's, yeah. it's weird. It's like... You know, working with Pat, and then there was this other guy, Josiah, that I worked with, um, and at the Outbound Collective, and he was Josiah was like the same way, just could just rattle off references to like yeah. so much stuff, deep and shit like, too. Oh, and you're just like, yeah. Uh, after a while, you're just like, yo, Josiah, that's just like, I've yeah, no idea just what you're talking. Went four steps over, and I'm, I'm <laughs> capable of, of pulling here. <laughs> well, dog, I think we did it, man. Um, I want to say thanks for delivering all that great snowboarding to us, dude. And uh, I think tall people all over, thank you for being that one of the people that helped get the gear right. 
Thanks, man. Because that's, that's huge, huge for the huge people. Um, cause, uh, yeah, it was, it was a tough, tough go for you guys for a while. It was rough. I, I wish at some point though, they, there's like the gnome shaped people like me that are they're short, <laughs> but yet they're wide. So you need like a wide short thing going on that no one figured that out quite yet. I have to like, go get my shit hemmed. Yeah. We all got problems out Weird. there. <laughs> some, some, somewhere, some way there's, yeah. there's something. But at least the tall people can be taken care of. That's right. And uh, not have their freaking... <laughs> Just this much arm. That's right. Every trick you do. <laughs> Bobby Meeks. Bobby Meeks used to have a uh, back when KT used to make uh, apparel. Yeah. Sorry to bring in another story here, but oh. uh, he had his whole like he would stand there and he'd be like, you know, pretend he was doing like oh, a, a front side grab. Yeah, yeah. And if the jacket like rode up, he'd be like, "That's no good. It's no that's, good. That's no <laughs> He's good." In meetings, doing and, that and totally <laughs> doing that in the meetings. And the great thing it's was so true, is the the you know the designers were there and they actually then made really good fitting stuff. Yeah, because they would never think of that. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh, interesting." And and then a handful of years later, they stopped making outerwear, and you know it was like, "Oh, well now they don't. Now I got to go ride for someone that doesn't. Yeah, had, <laughs> didn't make it for long armed people. I got to go start <laughs> all over again." <laughs> Well, dope, dude. Thank yeah. you so much for coming through. Thank you. And uh, thank you, everyone listening, watching. Thanks for the support, Patreon. And uh, we'll see you all out in the mountain. If you have any thank yous. Oh, man. That list could go on for a long time. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, it's early on. You know, I mentioned George, you know, Chris Pappas and Brian Harper and Tim Wendell and just so Some many legends, people. Legends and, right there. You know, and Luke Edgar and everyone at K2 and just... You know, Brian Harris at Dragon and just I mean, that name so many, so many people. Yeah. So. Dope. Yeah. Thank you, Tree. Good Thank to see you again, too, man. You too, man. We come up to, to your secret spot up there and shred That's right. the mountain that no one talks about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See y'all up in the mountain. Peace. Peace. Yeah, Tree. Yo, is this...